everybody welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for being here we're going to jump right into this video i'm learning to not ramble so first things first if you guys don't know who i am i'm crystal i am and have been on here for a minute with phlebotomy videos tutorials shorts and all of those things that help you with your phlebotomy career whether it's traveling phlebotomy mobile phlebotomy in a healthcare setting the eye clinic or hospital. So today I want to talk about the eight components to help you succeed in having a successful venipuncture. Okay, so let's dive right in. First things first, I do have a guide. I call it a course um, study guide. So you can cop this on my storefront. Um, it was Etsy. It's Big Cartel. The link is in my bio. So check it out. If not, um, don't worry because we're going to go over it in pieces here on the channel. Um, I know a lot of you are still looking for great tutorials about the order of draw. Um, just basic phlebotomy instruction, basic phlebotomy how to, basic phlebotomy, you know, the nitty gritty of it all without all the the extras. So that's what this is. It's phlebotomy and it's how to perform the perfect venipuncture because that's what phlebotomy is. So first things first, I'm going to show you the eight components. And in this guide, it breaks these eight components down, you know, one by one. And the very first one, and for all of you who are new, the very first thing, the most important thing to a venipuncture, everybody gets so caught up in the stick, but it's proper patient identification. That's number one. Proper patient identification is number one. Go ahead and write that down. And we're going to move on to number two because I do believe everybody knows what proper identification is, what it means. If you don't, we'll dive into that more in the next video because we're going to try and come and give you all of what's in this guide in short, quick, nice videos. But please, number one, patient identification. Number two, proper site selection. If you checked out my shorts, a short, one of my shorts a few days ago says to not collect and get your supplies together before selecting your site. So think about that. You don't set up your supplies and then find your site. You, you find your site first. Where are you going to stick the patient? So if you're in a clinic setting, of course, the, the patient comes into your space and you are supposed to assess the patient, see what's going on, see what their veins look like, et cetera, et cetera. That's how you do it. If you set your supplies up and bring the patient in, you've already set an expectation, which we should not do because you haven't assessed the patient yet. You may have butterflies ready, but you need a straight, or you may have straights ready, but you need a butterfly. So site selection is second. First, identify your patient. Second, once you got the patient, you wanna assess them. You want to find the proper site to stick the patient. Number three, site preparation kind of falls in hand with your selecting of your supplies. So you want to prep the site, right? You found that you got your patient, you have selected the site, now you want to prep the site. What does that look like? What does that involve? There are several ways to prep a site depending on what you're collecting. If we're collecting alcohol, an, an al alcohol ETOH sample, there's a proper way to uh, prep proper way to prep this site. If you're collecting blood cultures, there's a proper way to set this site. Like I said, go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned because what we're going to do over the course of this week is talk about all of these components. So fourth thing, where are you going to place the tourniquet and how long are you going to leave the tourniquet on? That's number four. Now we're going to select our needle. The fifth basic component, number five, is needle selection. Again, we don't select that stuff before we prep our patient. We select it now because we know what the site looks like. We have it prepped because we know what we need. Now we go ahead and select the needle that we're going to use. Number six, go ahead and get your tubes together, right? You got your needle together. Now we know what we need to draw and we need to get those tubes together. If it's a blue, red, gold, green, lavender, we already know that that's the proper order of draw. So we're gonna set those tubes up to have us, ha assist us with having a successful venipuncture. 
Number seven, we have the blood now. What do we do next? We label it. Not only do we just label it, we label it properly. Again, it kind of goes back to identifying your patient. You want to identify those labs. You want to make sure you have the right label on the right tube. If it's incorrect, that is called a misidentification. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Again, I'm going to reiterate, please stay tuned this week because this is what we're going over. I'm back to the tutorials here because a lot of people are asking, okay? So we need to be careful when we're labeling these specimens. Not only is the name not only does the name have to be proper and correct, not no misspells, no miss IDs when it comes to that, you do have to have, if it's a lavender, says a CBC, that label should not be on a green top. If it's a CP comp, that label should not be on a lab, lavender top and vice versa. So that's what labeling our specimens consist of. And number eight, how are we going to handle and process these specimens? Very important. Now that you have your specimens, you followed all the proper protocol, you followed all eight components to get this, success, this successful stick, the last two are so important. You don't want to mislabel and you don't want to mishandle. Some specimens need to be protected from light. Some specimens need to be inverted gently. Well, most all specimens, but inverted i should say we need to remember to do that we need to remember how to process these tubes to get them to the lab some specimens you are supposed to uh spin and pour before they go to lab so that's a whole nother topic of discussion as well but what i do want you guys to do is thumbs up this video let me know if you appreciated and liked it okay um, just do one dash eight in the comment section if you want me to continue the eight components for a successful vena puncture series that we are actually going to do here and we're going to go step by step by step by step like i said tomorrow we are going to talk about proper identification i have labels we're going to go over the labels we're going to look at if the labels have the color represented on that label so that you'll know what color tube to draw okay we're going to talk about that because some places do some places do not so you have to be you have to be in the know you have to know greens go to chemistry or immunology so some of the stuff a lot of you freak out about and i get it but some of it is going to come so natural and i don't want you freaking out at all but in the meantime that's what we'll do so i do want to talk to you about all of these components so that you're not freaked out when it comes time for the exam the nha the ASCP exam whatever exam you're going to take most of these exams are pretty much the same and when i say the same they have a lot of the same information worded differently one test may have more questions on it than another so it's different but please come join the family let us know what you have seen let us know what you're learning let us know what you know about the exams but i do know that a lot of the questions and answers are pretty much the same so don't freak out about that but go ahead and thumbs up share like comment and come back because this is what we're going to do you asked for it you're going to get it so i will be back in the next video in the meantime if you want to check this out please go ahead and just click the link in my bio and check out a lot of the resources that are available for your phlebotomy journey and um, while you do that i'm going to go ahead and get ready for the next video so i'll see you guys back here tomorrow i'll see y'all later y'all have a great day bye